Good morning. Hi, Dr. Melody here with Fit Plus Faith. Hello and welcome to day 56 of our Rooted in Christ Devo. And so, okay, we are talking today that you are the salt of the earth. What does that mean? How does God want to use you? We're going to dive into all of that in Matthew chapter 5 today. Good morning. As you're hopping on, go ahead and say hi. Let us know where you're coming in from. And if you've got your Rooted in Christ Devo with you, then you can turn to day 56, and that is page 142. And if you like a, a digital version, we have a gorgeous full, cop, full color digital version. It doesn't have the journaling space like the paperback does, but you can grab your own journal and still go through it. And so that is in PDF form, and you can get that at rootedinchristdevo.com. And then, of course, you can grab this sucker on Amazon if you want to follow along and dive deeper with the Lord. So good morning, ladies. As you're hopping on, go ahead and say hi. Let us know where you're coming in from. Great to see you, Tanya, coming in from Las Vegas. Angela from Alabama, great to see you guys this morning. We have a great message that we are the salt of the earth. That is what we are. That is what the body of Christ is. And what does that mean to be salty? <laughs> Salty has kind of had its own different connotation in recent days, hasn't it? Do you know that slang term, to be salty? That almost means like to be um, sarcastic or um, a little bit rude, you know, like super direct. But that's not what this is meaning about us being the salt of the earth and being salty <laughs> for the Lord. So let's pray and then we'll dive into that this morning. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for uh, just another beautiful day to gather together. Thank you for your women that you've brought here from all over the world, all over the country uh, to come together and to lift one another up and uh, to just praise you together. It is so important now, seemingly more than ever, that we are coming together as community. We are coming together to pray for one another and to encourage each other in our faith walk when it can be difficult. It can be difficult at times loving the unlovable and being your hands and feet when we're so busy. But we just thank you, God, for the community that we have here. We thank you for the mission that you have for each of our lives and that you're just waiting and looking for your people to say yes to you. And you have beautiful things in store that you want to use us to, to reach others. We just thank you, God, for this message this morning in Matthew chapter 5 about being the salt of the earth that we would take that into our heart and that Holy Spirit, you would inspire us with what you want to do with that, how you want to use us as the salt of the earth. We just ask Holy Spirit that you speak to me and through me in this morning's devotion and just speak to our hearts with exactly what we need to hear. We give this time to you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. So being the salt of the earth. So this is going to be our declaration for today. So let's start with it right now. Repeat after me and then type it down below. I, put your name in there, Melody, am the salt of the earth. It's that simple. I, Melody, am the salt of the earth. I have a responsibility to be the salt of the earth. God wants to use me in a powerful way to impact others to be the change, ultimately, right? To be the change so that they can see, so that they can come to know more and more about the Lord. And he wants to work in and through you to do that. So I want you to think right now, what, when you think of salt, what comes to mind? What comes to mind? What, what is salt? Why is it beneficial? What purpose does it serve? You know, let's just think of the practicality of what salt is and what it does. So type that down below. Let's see what you've got to say. Yes. Amen. Elizabeth. Amen. Tanya, you are the salt of the earth. We have a purpose, we have a job, we have something that God wants us to do to be the salt of the earth. And so thinking about salt itself, yes, Elizabeth says flavor, yes, it enhances flavor and that's good, right? We are here to enhance one another, right? We are here to build up and encourage those in the body of Christ. We are also meant to just, we can enhance others' lives by being God's hands and feet, right? by showing others who he is, by being a, a friendly smile and a warm hug, you know, something different that is outside of how the world typically 
treats people where it's just me, me, me all the time. We want to show others, even in the smallest ways, that they're loved, that they're seen, that they're heard, that they're known, that they have a creator that loves them deeply. You know, yes, exactly, Tanya, pre a preservative, exactly, Angela, that it's needed. It's definitely needed. Yeah, the original, when we think of the original uses for salt, it was absolutely a preservative, right? They didn't have ice boxes. They didn't have freezers. So how do we preserve things? How do we make them last? Well, we cover them and bury them in salt. And so thinking about that too, how may we as Christians, as the body of Christ, be a preservative of some way? What does that mean? To me, I begin to think of, I am preserving God's word. I am not manipulating and twisting and diluting the power of God's word. I'm not hunting and pecking and only using the parts of the Bible that make me feel good, but that I am seeing the whole and taking in the whole. And if I believe one part, I must believe it all. I am taking God's word and preserving the truth and the validity of God's word. How else are we a preservative? We're preserving our Christian culture. We are preserving our identity in Christ, who God has made us to be. We're preserving that in our own life by living from it daily, right? By acting from it daily, by not letting it fall away. We're preserving it. We're maintaining it. We're keeping it. We're keeping it alive. We're keeping it going for us and the future generations, right? For our family, for our children. We're preserving God's word and his ways. Yes. Amen, Angela. Preserving him and his word. So we bring flavor. We enhance. We preserve. We hold fast. And so let's actually dive into Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, where Jesus is talking about this. And we'll just read this quick little verse. So grab your good book if you've got it. Matthew chapter 15, verse 13. I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. It says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. Yikes. That's powerful. We think, oh, we're the salt of the earth. It's just all so good. It's all so good. But Jesus is giving us a warning here. <laughs> He says, but if you lose your saltiness, then you are not worth anything. If we lose God's standard, if we lower God's standard, if we don't hold his word up and live according to his word and maintain and preserve that in our life and be actively used by him to those around us in our life, we as Christians are then worthless. And then what? He said, you're to be thrown out and trampled by men. <laughs> the world will devour you. Your usefulness as a Christian won't mean anything anymore. Yikes. I don't know about you, but is that like kind of hitting you a little bit to the core? Giving you a little bit of a wake up call? Why it is important, why you are important? Why you understanding this principle and taking it seriously and living from that place as a part of your identity in Christ is important and it matters. You do not want to lose your saltiness. You do not want to become hypocritical in other people's eyes that you say one thing, but yet you do another. People are watching your life. You may be the only Bible someone ever reads. They're watching your life when a trial comes. When adversity comes, are you acting the way that God would have you act? Are you responding the way that he would have you respond? Or are you responding like the world? Are you giving in to your volatile emotions? Are you not taming your tongue and seeking the Lord for when to speak and what to say and when to hold your tongue? Are you speaking life and truth over others? and over your own life? Or are you just speaking death, 
meaning biting words, divisive words, accusatory words, putting people down, condemning. What are you doing with your mouth? <laughs> How are you using the power of your voice, the power of your words to affect others and to affect your own life and to be a representative of Christ? If you lose your saltiness, Therefore, being hypocritical in other people's eyes, they're not going to take you seriously for anything. How are they then going to one day receive God's word in their life? If all they've seen from the Christians is hip hypocrisy. And all the other negative things. <laughs> we have to take it seriously that we are meant to be different. We are meant to preserve God's word and to preserve his ways. It doesn't mean that we're not human and we don't feel these emotions and that we don't experience these difficult things, but it means that we are meant to respond to them differently, to live differently. Amidst the pandemic and amidst everything with the political system and amidst all the unrest and all the things going on, people are watching how you are responding. Are you giving in? to the pressure of the world and to what they want you to say or think or do or just responding in kind the way that someone who doesn't know the Lord would respond? Or do they see you living in peace despite your circumstances because this isn't your home? Your eternal home is with the Lord and because you have received peace from Him. You have received your peace from him that passes understanding that the external circumstances of what's going on in the world does not pull you down. It does not define you. It doesn't jade you. They see you living with peace and hope that they're longing for, but that they don't have, but you have it. Are we using our saltiness, our set apartness, To, to be God's representative, to be his reflection, to be his ambassador in this hurting and broken and sinful world. That is what it means to be the salt of the earth. But there's a warning here that if you lose your saltiness, if you don't stay plugged into the Lord, if you give in to the things of this world, if you give in to the desires of your flesh, there are consequences there and you will lose your saltiness. And he says, you're worth nothing at all. You're to be trampled by the world, trampled by men. We need to heed this warning here. We need to heed this warning. Yes, Tanya says, I try my best to use kind words and think before I speak and to listen more. Responding less with anger. Yes, giving your anger and those angry emotions to the Lord, giving your frustration and your irritation and all of those heavy, intense emotions to the Lord, going before him with those things, crying out to him in the way that you want to respond, but crying out those emotions to him, let him hear you and then let him give you peace. Let him give you guidance and direction before you respond, right? <laughs> Elizabeth, because I know you, I know that you're being sarcastic, but you're so funny. Quit yelling at me. I know, right? It, but it's intense. And we need to understand what he's trying to tell us in this passage and that it is important that you understand what it means to be the salt of the world, the salt of the earth, However, you also need to heed the warning of what he says happens if you lose your saltiness, if we lose our connection with the Lord, if we begin walking and living outside of our identity in Christ and living like the world. He said it's of no use, but we are meant to be useful. We are meant to be powerful. We are meant to be a beautiful force for good if we don't lose our saltiness, if we don't lose our effectiveness that we only get from him, that we only get 
by remaining that way, remaining salty, which is preserving, which is adding, benefiting? Are you being a benefit to those around you or are you being a detriment? Are you sharing the hope and love of Christ through your actions, through your face, through your countenance, through your words? Or are you acting as though, like the world does, who doesn't know God? So they're caught up in stress and in anger and in divisiveness. They, they don't understand, but that's not meant to be you. That's not meant to be you who have said yes to God. Your declaration today, if you haven't yet typed it below, repeat after me and type it down below. I, put your name, Melody, right? Tanya, Elizabeth, I am the salt of the earth. I am the salt of the earth. It means I was made on purpose and for a purpose. It means that I have accepted and received the Lord and therefore he wants to use me to affect change in those around me. He wants to use me to preserve his word, to do not lower my standard of God's word, of what he says I am, of what he says I can do. We don't want to lower our standard. Anything that doesn't meet up against that, which is all the messages of the world, anything that doesn't meet up against God's standard of who you are and who you've been created to be needs to have no place in your life. Needs to have no place in your life. So let's look at that. What are my standards? And am I keeping my standard with the Lord? Am I keeping the standard that he has set for me? Where I reject anything that comes less than that. And anything that is not of the Lord will be less than that. We don't want to lower our standards. As we lower our standards, we are losing our saltiness. And again, not salty in the way that the slang term means (laughs) nowadays. (laughs) Basically, that's kind of the opposite of this. Losing our effectiveness. Losing our ability to benefit others. To preserve God's word. Yes, yes, Tanya. Be the reason someone feels seen, heard, and loved. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you are powerful. Your identity in Christ makes you powerful. Your identity in Christ makes you effective. It makes you important. It gives you a purpose. And that's a beautiful thing. So declare your identity in Christ today, that you are the salt of the earth. Go back into the previous devotions that we've done, or if you have your own devotion with you, just go back and read those statements. Guys, in the, at the end of this book, at the end of this devotional, and at the end of the digital version that I mentioned earlier, there's a summary page of every single one. Actually, it's two pages. This is the summary of every single statement that we go through in this book. This is all 72 identities in Christ that you have. Do you want to feel powerful? Do you want to Step into your identity in Christ in an even more meaningful way. Go to this and start reading it. (laughs) I, Melody, put your name here. Repeat after me. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm an overcomer, a partaker of his divine nature, an ambassador for Christ, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a purchased people, the righteousness of God, a temple of the Holy Spirit, the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, the light of the world, his elect. I am full of mercy, kindness, humility, long suffering. I am forgiven of all of my sins and washed in the blood. I am delivered from the power of darkness and translated into God's kingdom. I am redeemed and overflowing with gratitude. I am called to be the voice of his praise. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. I am raised up, greatly loved, strengthened and submitted. The devil flees from me because I resist him in the name of Jesus. I press on. I do not have a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I have been crucified with Christ. I am complete, alive, free from the law of sin and death. I am far from oppression, born of God, and the evil one does not touch me. I am holy and without blame before him in love. That's only the first paragraph. That's just this. You keep it going. (laughs) 
You keep it going. Imagine reading this and declaring this over yourself and over your life every single day. You cannot read this. You cannot declare your identity in Christ and leave the same. You cannot be the same before you read it and after you read it because you are declaring the power and the truth of God's word over your life. It changes you. So you want to remain salt? You want to remain the salt of the earth, preserving God's word, walking and living in power, and not being trampled by men? Well, then you declare your identity in Christ and live from that place every day. If you have your Devo, then do this. It's at the, it's at the end. It's the summary of it all, page 184. And if you have the digital version at Rooted in Christ Devo, for your computer, if you have the digital version, go to the end, go to the, the final pages and read that over yourself every day. You cannot be the same after you have done that. That is how powerful God's word is. That is how powerful your words are. It is powerful, right ladies? I love that. Elizabeth says, I feel torn. I feel I should stand up for what is right, especially right now, but I don't mean to be hateful at all, but it does make me angry with all the double, double standards and skewing of the Bible to suit their ways. I agree with you. Stand up for truth. Stand up for truth. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you. If you're wanting to rebut something, if you're wanting to bring truth to something, ask the Holy Spirit for how you should approach it, what you should say, how you should go about it. And in your heart, in your heart, know that you're doing it from love. That must be your motivation is from love. God will see your motivation. <laughs> so you're not wanting to tear other people down. You're not wanting to puff yourself up and you know stoke your own pride. God will see your motivation. If you're feeling stirred and called and the Holy Spirit is prompting you to do or to say something, then you need to obey that and you need to ask the Holy Spirit, what do I do? What do I say? How do I respond? And pray for those people. Pray for the ones that are being deceived, for the ones that are twisting God's word to, to fit their needs, that are pulling only the parts they want to hear out of God's word and they're ignoring his warnings. They're ignoring his consequences. But one day they will be called to account for that as well. And that's on them. But you remain the salt. You remain the preservative of God's standards. And you defend it and you live from it. That is how you remain effective in being the salt of the earth. Effective in being a preservative of God's word not lowering your standard, effective of being, adding value to others' lives, right? Enhancing flavor, therefore enhancing their life in some way, enhancing their life with the love of God. So good. So therefore, your declaration today, if you haven't typed it down below, I, Melody, put your name, and the salt of the earth. It's as simple as that. Dive in to Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 that we read today and, and meditate on that verse and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. What is it meaning to you? And how may he be course correcting you if needed? How may he be leading you and guiding you to remain salt and not lose your saltiness and thus bear the consequences of hypocrisy and of ineffectiveness that he's warning about in this verse? Do not let that be you, right? Do not let that be you. It is sad, Elizabeth. It's so sad that they have the wool pulled over their eyes. It is sad. And the enemy is working hard to do that. <laughs> working hard to do that. And it is, it's, it's something to mourn. It's something to be sad because some of those people will not be saved by the time their time is up but we pray that for the scales to fall off. We pray for hearts to be softened and open to receive the truth of God's word. We pray for Holy Spirit conviction to be received and therefore repentance to be had for their life to, to change, for them to choose different action and for them to seek the Lord for repentance 
of their past transgressions. We just continue to pray and intercede for them that God will be able to intervene in their life and, and remove, remove their eyes being blinded, their hearts being hardened. Yes, we have to use discernment when dealing with things like this. Absolutely. Absolutely. But we know the one that has the answers. We know the one that has the answers and the Holy Spirit is with you and he is meant to be your guide. You are to ask him and to seek him for guidance and for help and for knowledge. He is, he, his part of his job description is to help lead you into God's truth that will always match up to God's word. So seeking the Holy Spirit for that, seeking him for his guidance to lead you into truth and to lead you into what to do. You are never alone. You are never to make these decisions on your own. You never have to feel that burden. You seek the Lord for what to do and he will lead you and show you and he will bring you peace. <clears throat> or if your heart is feeling so overwhelmed and so burdened, then you seek the Lord in prayer. You continue to pray and intercede for these people. Man, so good. Well, I love you ladies. That's it for today. A powerful little verse, wasn't it? It was just one verse, but it's so powerful. So dive into your identity in Christ. Live from that place. Let's go out and be the salt of the earth today with your words and your actions. Let's not dull ourselves down and lose our saltiness and our effectiveness by lowering our standards to that of the world. Man, our standards are so much bigger, so much better, so much better. <clears throat> yes, Tanya says we are human and emotions can lead us at times when we must seek God for what's next. Absolutely. And we give our emotions to him. We don't deny our emotions, but we give them to the Lord and we, we pour them out before him. He will hear us. He hears us. He collects our tears. He hears our emotions. And then he gives us peace and he gives us guidance into how to properly respond. Yeah, we're never alone in it. We're never alone. I love you all. I'll see you on Friday at 8.30 a.m. Pacific time. Have a great day, guys. Bye. Tag some friends. Share this out. See you later.